um, uh, narrowed down for emergency vehicles to come one direction, but people were not able to no, exit. We were at a dead block you were, you a were clogged. Mm -hmm. You were clogged and up. Watching the fire approach. Yeah. Were there were there a lot of vehicles using that other lane, or do you see? No, nobody was. Just the emergency vehicles, and it was every so often. It wasn't like all in a row, and it wasn't. You see you three know. or four cars moving. In. Was there anybody yeah. directing? Was there anybody helping? It's mass confusion. Okay, so you end up. So how far? How many miles, roughly, from where you evacuated, where you lived, went the back roads? And then got to the mass confusion. What? Give us a time idea. Um, um, I would say Doe Mill. I was probably about five miles, oh. six miles from the fire. I was at Doe Mill, coming across Doe Mill, 232. Now people won't know where that is in no, many right, instances. Right. So just distance-wise in miles, um, let's uh, talk about that. Yeah. From your house to where you exited. Uh, onto Skyway where you saw all the tail lights for as far as you can see. Yeah. Well, where I lived, it was almost getting to the point where it was getting burned. My roommate didn't have enough time to get all his cars out. Where but he got out. out. He ended up staying at, at a writing okay. with his grandfather. Okay. Uh, basically, he got his cars as far as the upper part of the street there, and they, they made him park in the right hand. And they broke the glass out and made him get inside right aid and take shelter. Who's the they that made him? Fire department. Okay. How many miles do you think it was from 32 going Garland route from your house? Uh, I'd say, no, 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 no. It's, it's less than less than three miles, four miles. To Garland from your house? No, no, from the, the Dome Mill cutoff. Oh, oh. Have you been back to, have you been able to get back to your place? And why haven't you? Because they're... Uh, there are the National Guards there, and they're not letting anybody uh, uh, go back to that that part of Miguel. Do you want to try and go back and see your place? Of course I do. Okay, so what are they telling you? Have you gone up there? You've driven up? What have they told well, they you? They won't let you go up. I mean, you get to a certain point, a checkout checkpoint, and you can't get past it. There's yeah, no, they're checking there's no easy. entry. There's no entry, and it doesn't matter if your address is one that's been burned. There's still no entry. You want to try and go up there with us? Sure. Okay, well why don't we do that after we finish the interview. Let's drive up there. Let's see if we can... Can you get in back way if you, if you have to? Uh, you can, go you can get into Miguel yet from the back way. I mean, right now they said Doe Mill Road and uh, Garland Road is so tore up and trapped. Don't make sure. Yeah, you know, my car is so low it wouldn't make it again. So I have to go through and skip. Okay. So you need an SUV to get through the way that you would know to get through. Yeah. Okay. It's not. It's not really that bad, but I mean, it's, there's big pits and stuff, you know, from water being washed out in the rains, stuff like that. Right. Has anybody reached out to you or others that have offered to help from any of the emergency services or anybody reached out? No, I didn't. I mean, I find it hard to, to go to Walmart and these, the FEMA place there in, in the Sears building and get help with gas, you know. Or, or I mean, I sure I could eat a meal there, you know, because they have bag lunches. And, Stuff like that, but I haven't yet received any funds as far as help. Uh, a lot of people have it. Yeah, I mean, they. I got an appointment today for that, at five o'clock. I'm oh, sure I make that. Okay, out. well, we we don't want to interfere with that for sure. Yeah, nice. I I want to also advise you of something very important. Um, and and you may not understand this as I describe this. So um, this is for the listeners and the viewers to understand. Uh, we reviewed the Climate Action Plan for Butte, Butte County, where you're being required to reduce your greenhouse gas emissions and your carbon footprint. Are you familiar with that conversation? No. Okay. Um, what do you... I'm going to talk about that just for a moment, okay? Um, part of the plan says what will happen to you guys if you don't successfully stop using what they say is petroleum and oil and reduce your consumption of resources. And they list in that plan the weather events that will occur if you do not reduce consumption. And um, so really? I pulled the plan and I have part of that plan with me and I'll show that to you. 
100%. And then I have an excerpt in that plan. Again, it's Butte County Climate Action Plan. They're in all the counties, okay? Butte is not alone. They're in all the counties. In that plan, it also says, even if you reduced your greenhouse gas emissions to the requirement of what your city council and your local bureaucrats approved for you, even if you managed to reduce your consumption and meet the levels, it wouldn't stop the changing climate because it's too far advanced. Now, why am I telling you this? Um, it's because everybody that's listening right now to this story needs to understand in those plans, it says the type of weather events that they're going to hit you with. Okay. This is worldwide. Now, I don't want to add right now to any more sorrow and any more trauma that you guys have. So I'm going to leave this conversation here. Because and, and, and I know that this, had, this dovetails into the, the, the logging. You were talking about all the logging going on that's, that's been happening, and Doug was talking about how they, they're eminent domaining properties from the, all the loggers. Can you talk about how they've been logging so much? Um, they haven't. Well, the Sierra Pacific? Sierra Pacific? Well, I haven't noticed anybody logging. Like, Have you guys? Lot, yeah, there's a lot of West Sterling City. There's a lot of logging going on there. I have seen a lot I of love log. All, that. all of a sudden? No, it's been going oh, okay. on. Now let me well, ask you, do you st will you still have a job? No, I, everything I own burned. All my equipment. All your equipment? Yeah. I told FEMA about it, but I'm not really expecting any help. I mean, they sound pretty negative about it, matter of fact. Now, how do you see yourself getting back up on your feet? I don't. You don't have a plan yet? No, I, 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 don't, I don't have a plan. I mean, I, I have... I have the means of doing it if I can acquire the things I need, like the tools I burn, you know, burn up in the fire, I can do it. I can rebuild. But without it, I can't. Okay. So what we're talking about here are funds needed to help people get back to work. Yeah. I think it's uh, funding, and I think it's um, morale. And morale. Hope. Yeah, Hope. And what, what, yeah well, we want to also advise you guys, because we've seen the movie play out, when FEMA came into Santa Rosa, they made everybody require by strong arguing them because the soil was contaminated. FEMA gets a contract to provide services to clear six to eight inches of land. And in doing so, you have to sign over your insurance. And nobody, 97% of people that had insurance are not qualified to rebuild. And so these areas in Coffin Park and Fountain Grave, <laughs> Fountain Grove, are not being rebuilt. And this is the benzene in the soil they're using as an excuse six months later, delays, delays, delays. So who's going to end up with the land? The government. Climate action plan. Well, a lot of people I know didn't have insurance. Um, they don't allow you to have, in, especially in older mobile homes, like up in uh, Miguelia. And so they're not insurable? They're not insurable. Why did they say that? Uh, well, what? they won't even let you get renter's insurance. Yeah. You know? And, um, we're like, what? Okay. They said you know to call why? back. They said call back in three months. Call back in Most three months. Due to the age of the homes. Yeah, and it's due to the age of the homes. But when you call to get renters insurance, they tell you to call back in three months. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's just you know. Um, so I want I want to say a couple of other things that we did not know um, as a result of our fires. Um, a group rolled into town, a number of groups rolled into town, all with the name, many of them at least, with resilience in those group names. What? And we found out that that's a Rockefeller-based program to come in and take over the town and the land. And they were also promoting donations. And in our case, they had a fire a movie put together it was called The Night Santa Rosa Burned, Urban Inferno. Mm -hmm. And all the donations went Whoops. to um, Sonoma County Resilience Fund. So... What kind of like the beer they're making? The beer that they're making, the resilience beer. We need to find out who's backing that beer because what we're finding that is happening, the donations that people are giving 
are going to the to the perpetrators of these crimes and not ending up into the pockets of the people that have lost the houses. Victims. Yeah. The victims. Right. And in talking to a number of friends of ours who lost homes the night Santa Rosa burned, uh, they were even they weren't even aware of the types of opportunities that were available for some money and monetary relief. And there were lots of agencies that were um, donating. We had a credit union locally that was uh, collecting presumably funds that they were going to Thirty-two receive. million dollars Redwood Credit Union took in. Bob Steele, the president, uh, is executive at Global Alliance Capital, which is a disaster capitalist firm. Darius Anderson, Sonoma Media Group, the owner of the Press Democrat, appointed James Lee Witt, the FEMA director, come in and rebuild North Bay. I went to Houston after Hurricane Harvey. $450 million of donated money. Not one person had seen Red Cross at all. And you notice there's no Red Cross. No, they're, they're not taking Safeway donations like they did in Hurricane Harvey and Irma. Okay, so so now let's talk about Red Cross because obviously you've got something to say about oh, Red I'm Cross. Just I was going to say that, like, I've been watching the news, and I've been seeing everybody's GoFundMes, and I've been seeing all kinds of people doing fundraising and donations here, and the banks, like you guys said, too, up here, taking in donations from regular people to try to help everybody else. From all over the country. Where the hell's it going From everywhere. Now? And I was just wondering that, too. I would like to know how much they've raised, and where is it at? Because people like him... They should be getting some of that money. Absolutely. Even if it is for a hotel or for whatever it is, for dog food, for whatever, a place to live, who cares? But I'm just saying, it's just bullshit. I'm okay, sorry. Okay, so, so let's, let's think of it like this. Let's think of it yeah. as lessons learned from the year after the fires <laughs> and the fact that money was donated Gosh. and Where to go? redirected. So it would be very important to, to um, have some local people check into where some of the uh, monies are going, how they're being collected, and where do you get that? Because a year later, after Friends of Ours lost homes, they found out that um, there was money available, but they didn't know it at the time. And nobody tells you. And nobody did. And um, they were in grief. They were in shock, just as what you were experiencing. They had lost everything. And um, they... It, it, it takes a while for the fog to clear yeah. and for the emotions to settle and to realize that there are uh, monies available. There are lots of donations coming in. It's just getting someone locally to start finding out how do you directly go and find these monies. Right. And that would be very important to start checking. And we're going to put up our own funding when I raised $8,000 for Hurricane Harvey raise ten thousand dollars for Chris Haskell and we're gonna raise money personally for you guys and help us redistribute it ourselves this is gonna be one-to-one -one. we're not involving any corporate agencies we're not involving anybody else all these people that are watching this will set up a fund for you guys and start helping you ourselves we have to help each other that's what we did in Santa Rosa and people found out when they went to the bank that bank was charging them two percent interest to borrow money they gave them $1,800, and that was it. And then they had to borrow money at 2% interest, and they took in $32 million of our local bank. This wow. is this is This is what's happening. It's called disaster capitalism. I worked in Wall Street. I sat there in boardrooms while they talked about what they were doing, and when I questioned the ethics and moralities of, of the environment they were they're going to do to and the people they were going to do to, they told me, how do you, how do you, how's your family, Jamie? Which means we're a family here, and if you don't like our family, just walk out the door. But disaster capitalism is pure profit. They leave water bottles, and they keep all the money. So please, people listening, do not donate to the Red Cross. Rothschild okay. means red, child means shield, Knights of Malta, Red Cross, just like the British flag. So please, do not give it to these evil people. And I'm also going to be thinking about how, because we're only three hours from you, and we have lots of people that are a year advanced in recovery after having lost everything and gone through the trauma. So I think it might be a really good opportunity for some of us to come up and have a meeting and talk about what a year later looks like so that you understand there is hope down the road. And we can share our experiences so, so all of you can understand. We just had somebody arrive that when that had the... Uh... Dripping stoplight. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, should we put so, a pause here for a second? Yes, we do.